Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today I want to share with you the books I was able to read in August and then kind of go over some of my September plans so far, which both of these piles are fairly big, but it's all right. Um, I was able to read six books in the month of August, which is a little less than I was kind of expecting, but I was in quite the reading slump after um, the reading rush, which kind of was expected because it tends to happen to me. So, I mean, it could have been worse. Um, but six books is still nothing to shy at or to be ashamed of. Um, it was fantastic. So let's just get started talking about what I read. The first book I finished, um, I, it was an audiobook I listened to from Libro FM. My link is below if that's something that you're interested in. It's a really great audiobook service that supports independent, independent bookstores, whatever, which one you choose. Um, I listened to A Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. I loved this book. And it happens to be, I think, Barnes & Noble's National Book Club pick, I think, for September. And I can totally see why. So this book takes place over the course of like three or four days. So it's a very short time period. It takes place during um, the Spanish flu. Um, so like 1919 time frame. Um, and you follow your main character who is a nurse. She's kind of new to um, being a nurse, but she's in charge of the maternity ward for patients who are pregnant and have the influenza. Um, and so you get to know her really well. You get to know a handful of her patients really, really well. Um, and kind of how she deals with the happenings at the time. Um, there's a lot of parallels between what happens there and what is happening today that deals with masks, that deals with propaganda. Um, I know that Emma Donahue's publisher kind of did things to get this released earlier than it was supposed to just because of um, current conditions, which I just, I, it was very interesting. So if you are looking for a pandemic read during a pandemic, highly encourage you to read this book. Um, you just, I connected with these characters. You get an idea of how this not only affected the essential workers and it kind of touched on how she is an essential worker, um, what position it puts them in, what the patients are feeling, how it affects different classes. It, it was a fantastic book. Highly, highly encourage you to read it. I think I gave it five stars. So then the other book that I read and finished in August is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. Um, this is the first book in a trilogy that follows, it's basically a um, Charlotte Holmes, Charlotte Holmes, Sherlock Holmes and Watson retelling. So Charlotte Holmes is a descendant of Sherlock Holmes and then you have Jamie Watson who is a descendant of Watson. Um, and they end up coming together at a boarding school. Um, they did not know each other prior. They kind of knew of each other just because of their family correlation um, and they're forced to basically team up to start solving some crimes that start to occur at this boarding school. Um, I wanna say I gave it three and a half stars I think. And I am curious to see what else happens in the series. I think I have them up there. <laughs> I think they're there. So good. I ended up, I read about half of it and listened to the rest of it just because of time. I had more time to listen to books than read books at the beginning of the month. Um, and both were great. Um, I would ha definitely suggest the audiobook as well. So I might actually keep going kind of that route where I read slash listen because it was good. Next book I picked up was another boarding school thing. <laughs> so I picked up Good Girls Lie by J.T. Ellison. Um, this follows the happenings at the Good School. It is a um, bit of a boarding school, but it's for high school girls only who are kind of part of very prominent families. Um, like, and they're set up so that they go off into like Ivy League schools. So getting into the Good School is fantastic for your future. Um, this follows Ash as she attends the good school. 
um, and how she, I guess there's some secrets that are connected to her that she kind of brings with her that she's kind of trying to hide um, and how she interacts and kind of gets involved with the other girls at the school. There are some secret societies and so there's that aspect of it, but really great, really great book. I really enjoyed it. Um, awesome foreshadowing that JT Ellison does in this book. That was like, she gives it to you and then you're just hungry for like, how the heck did it get to that part? Um, I'm definitely interested in picking up more JT Ellison books. This was my first one and it will not be my last one for sure. Next book I picked up in August is Little Faith by Nicholas Butler. Nic this was for my in-person um, book club. We actually met at a wine bar this month um, and we sat outside on the patio. It was awesome. Um, but this one, this month's theme was a book that either takes place in Wisconsin or is by a Wisconsin author. And we kind of checked both of those boxes with this one. Nicholas Butler is a Wisconsin author. We read his book last year, um, Shotgun Love Songs. And so this year we picked up Little Faith. And Little Faith is actually based on a true event that happened in Wisconsin, I think in 2008. Um, um, yeah, in March of 2008. So this follows Lyle and Peg and they are kind of enjoying their golden years. They're enjoying being close to retirement and just kind of taking it easy. Um, and their daughter ends up coming back to live with them. She kind of got herself in a little bit of trouble. She has a little boy who is eight, I think. Maybe not, maybe he's younger than that. Maybe he's only like five. Um, but Lyle and his grandson Isaac like have this really special bond while um, his daughter, while they're living with them. Um, they just have this really awesome like grandpa grandson type of a bond and they do some very Wisconsin things. There's an apple orchard involved in here which of course gets me so excited for fall because I cannot wait to get me some fresh apples that we go and pick off the tree. Anyways, back to the book. Um, Shiloh gets herself involved in kind of a, what do we want to call it? An extremist church with some very extreme beliefs. And Lyle finds himself in a position where he wants to support his daughter and her choices, yet he feels the need to protect Isaac. And that's all I'm going to tell you this makes you think this made for a fantastic conversation with our book club this i highly highly suggest this book for a book club um lots to talk about and considering this was based on a true story even more of a rabbit hole that we all went down so definitely pick this up i think i gave it four stars um it was good the next book I picked up was for my works book club and I read The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Um, so much hype around this book. So this follows the Vine sisters. Um, they were identical twins. They grew up in a very small southern black community um, where this specific community really rewarded people who did what they could to have lighter skin, to have kids who had lighter skin. Um, and so they end up leaving the community and they both go their separate ways and one twin continues on as if she is a black woman and the other twin continues on as if she is a white woman. Um, so you have stuff that's happened in the past that you're learning about. You have this secret from the one twin. You have Snickers jumping on bookshelves. Um, very insightful. Another really great book club book. Um, parts of this I thought were just a little slow for me, um, but overall I think I gave it four stars. Still a really, really great book. Will make you think. Definitely makes you think. Um, it was a month full of books that make you think because the last book I picked up in August was Hum If You Don't Know the Words by Bianca Mar Maras. Um, this I read with Amanda over at the Curly Reader. Thank you, Amanda, for getting me to finally pick up this book. You guys have been telling me how fantastic this is, and you were not wrong. Um, this takes place in um, Johannesburg in the 1970s, and we have Beauty, who is 
a black woman who is trying to figure out what happened to her daughter who was involved in um, a bit of a protest. Um, and she comes to Johannesburg and kind of needs to have work while she's there looking for her daughter. And so she um, starts watching Robin, who is a nine-year-old um, and actually acts like a nine-year-old, which I appreciate. Um, there's some books that I've read where it's like they're young and yet they make very adult decisions. Nope. Robin make very, made very nine-year-old. I think she was nine, maybe 11. I feel like she was like one of my kids' ages. It's just what I'm remembering. But anyways, um, the relationship between Beauty and Robin is fantastic. Some of the things that Beauty says is just fantastic. Some of the things that Robin says is fantastic. Like Bianca, every sentence is, every word is in this book for a reason. And you can't help but appreciate that. It reminds me of kind of like Frederick Bachman where like every single sentence is there with not necessarily with something behind it because it's not like it it's not like you have to overthink things but just there's purpose to them and i loved the one sentence in here is anger is a self-administered poison and i remember reading that and being like whoa yeah and it just if i can remember that when i am obviously in a spot where i'm angry anger is a self-administered poison like so good. Um, but highly, highly encourage you to pick this one up. I give this five stars. It was fantastic. I got to a point where I just couldn't stop and I had to finish it in a day because there you get to a point where something happens and you're like, oh my God, now what is she going to do? You just, it's so awesome. So definitely pick this up. Um, so I know one of my viewers asked that I list of the books I talked to below so I'll definitely do that and I'll give you a link to an Amazon page if you want to pick up any of these. It was a really great reading month. I loved all of them. Definitely check them out. Um, the other book that I spent a fair amount of time on in August but didn't finish is North and South by John Jakes. I am approaching the halfway mark. I'm doing this with Vicki and Bobby. They're doing a bit of a book club where they're giving us two months to finish this book. Um, I'll leave links to that below as well. And I love this book too. Um, I just love this book. I hate this actual physical copy because I mean, there are times that I'm like, Mwah. it's probably because I'm getting old, but I love this book. There's so much that's happening. There's so much still to happen. Um, but I'm about that halfway point. I did get to a point where I was a little bit behind where everybody else was, but I am catching up. Um, so I should, I should be good once this next weekend is over, but I'm definitely concentrating on this one for September to finish that. I'm also reading The Hiding Place by CJ Tudor. This is the third book I've read by CJ Tudor, and I think that's all of them. Um, so far I'm loving it. I'm about 50 pages into it, and, uh, yeah. I mean, the first few sentences of this book is just like creepy, creep, creep, creepy. And I will share it with you because I, I don't even really know what it's fully about yet. Um, but yeah, okay, here we go. Even before stepping into the cottage, Gary knows that this is bad. It's the sickly sweet smell drifting out through the open door, the flies buzzing around the sticky hot hallway and if that isn't a dead giveaway that something about this house is not right not right in the worst possible way then the silence confirms it so I'm going to finish that up this month as well um we had a little bit of a poll a little bit of a vote uh last week for Booklist Thursday um to help us kind of get through some advent books and the orphan's tale one by pan jenna so i'm going to read that one in september and then vlog about it of course um my couple of book club books that i have to read i need to read the red bandana by tom rinaldi i know this is a september 11th book which i'm kind of waiting for the september for september 11th i think i want to kind of read it on that day i'm hoping to read the entire thing on that day it's not that long of a book so that's my hope and then the other one for my other book club is our theme this month was to pick a book that has a repeating word in the title. And so we picked In a Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. A little nervous because I've heard it's a bit of a slow start, but we're still going to, we're going to give it a try. 
And then I do have an arc that I need to get to this month as well. It is A Most English Princess, a novel of Queen Victoria's Daughter by Claire McHugh. Um, this one comes out on the 20th of September, and I love this cover. Um, so again, uh, she's Princess Victoria, kind of follows her life, and then how she dealt with, I think, World War II. So I'm excited to read that as well. So that's kind of what I have coming up in September. That's two, four, six books. I'm hoping to squeeze in a couple more would be fantastic. I have quite the pile over here that needs to be worked on. Um, needless to say, I have a huge pile behind me as well. So anyways, that's my plan. Tell me below if there's any good books you've read in August or what are you reading this month in September that you're super excited before. As always, I love to chat about books in the comments. Otherwise, like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.